ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعه من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فلا يضر الا نفسه اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال عز وجل لا اقسم بيوم القيامه ولا اقسم بالنفس اللوامه أيحسب الإنسان أن لن نجمع غابة بلا قادرين على أن نسوي بنانة رب الشح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وهل العقدة من لساني يفكر قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وزدنا الطباء وأرنا الباطل باطلا وزدنا اجتناب آمين يا رب I have recited to you the first four ayat of Surah Al-Qiyamah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا أقسم بيوم القيام No, I swear that there will be a day of judgment. ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة And no, I swear by the soul, that part of your soul that reproaches you. Meaning, when you do something wrong, you feel, I've done something wrong. There is something we call a guilty conscience. This is lawam. This is the part of you that reproaches you, tells you you're guilty. And Allah is saying that that part of you tells you you're guilty is proof of the fact that there is a day of judgment. That why else has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this mechanism in a human being that when he does something wrong, he feels guilty. Other than the fact to show him that there is something that relates to the Day of Judgment, that's why he's feeling guilty. And it's amazing about, even biologically, you know, you think about it, it's so amazing that you can put a human being on a lie detector. Like, you know, you go to the cops can test you on a lie detector and tell if you're lying. Your body, your body, even your biological being is morally inclined. Even your biological being is morally inclined. And so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, لا أقسم بيوم القيامة And by the way, I want to mention something of Balada for the people of, uh, who understand the Arabic language. That it would have been enough to say, أقسم بيوم القيامة وأقسم بالنفس اللوامة But, it is always the asloop of Qur'an that when Allah wants to emphasize something, especially in response to what other people are saying. So for example, other people are saying, Oh no, in here, hayatuna dunya, namutu wa nahya. This is the only life. We live in it and we die. So as a response to something, Allah responds in a stronger and a more emphatic way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا أقسم بيوم القيامة ولا أقسم بنفس اللوامة I swear, there will definitely be a day of judgment. And I swear by that part of you that reproaches you when you do something wrong. The other way to look at the asloop of these ayahs is, who is saying, لا أقسم بيوم القيامة? Somebody who is صادق المسلوب, even amongst them. He, Muhammad wasallam, is saying in response to them, لا أقسم بيوم القيامة ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة. So, <coughs> The point being, by the way, every qasam has jawab al qasam. So every oath has its response. So the oath is, لا أقسم بيوم القيامة I swear by the day of judgment. ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة And I swear by that part of you that is inside you that tells you that there is wrong and right. And by the way, if there is no day of judgment, then there's no right and wrong. If there's no one to judge us ultimately, if there's no one to judge human beings, then there would be no right and wrong. 
the very fact that human beings from the beginning of human history have accepted the idea of right and wrong forecasts the shadow towards the day of judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا أقسم بيوم القيامة No, I swear by the day of judgment. ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة And no, I swear by that part of yourself that reproaches you when you do something wrong. What? Now, ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة Now, this is the جواب القسم. أيحسب الإنسان أن لن نجمع عظامة Does man think we will not gather his bones together? You think that Allah will not gather your bones together? Notice how Allah responds to this. أَيَحْصَبُ الْإِنسَانُ أَلَّا نَجْمَعِ اللَّهَ بَلَا Again, بَلَا here in response to what other people are saying. بَلَا Because over here, and this is the asloop of Qur'an, Qur'an always quotes the mukhalifin. Allah, Allah always quotes what the other people are saying, and then responds. Okay? This is very... Uh, for example, Allah will say, "Amma yatasa'al." What are they asking one another about? You know, like this. Allah will quote them. What qalu kada wa kada. This is very typical in the Quran. So, ayahsabul insan wa alnan najmai wama. Allah is summarizing their argument. Does man not think that we will bring back his bones together? Bala qadirin ala anu sawiya banana. But no, we will bring back even his fingerprints. This is what the Quran is saying. We will bring back even his banan, his fingerprints. Now, for Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to have said this statement 1,400 years ago, it would have just been balada, it would have been just eloquence of language. It would have been just, oh wow, you know, Allah will bring back even our fingerprints. But today we realize that what is the significance of saying such a statement? that we will bring back even their fingerprints. We will even bring back their fingerprints. The significance of that is understood today. Because one of the ways to identify an individual, as you all know, is, or one of the only ways to identify an individual is by his or her fingerprints. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, لا أقسم بيوم القيامة No, I swear by the day of judgment. وَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالنَّفْسِ اللَّوَّامَةِ And I swear by that part of yourself that reproaches you when you do something wrong. You have this guilty sense. Not like what Freud said. Freud said, the psychologist, he, he le left the idea of, of guilty consciousness to when you don't follow the conventions of society, when you don't follow the conventions of society, then you feel guilty because you are not following the conventions of society. This is not what Islam holds to be the reality of the human being. But the reality of the human being is that there is a true sense of right and wrong. And when a human being does something wrong that he thinks is wrong, whether it is really wrong or not, but when he does something wrong, then his inner self reproaches him and says, and he make, makes him feel guilty. And this is the sign of a living, this is a living human being, that when he does something wrong, he feels guilty. This is a sign of somebody who is alive inside. His humanity is still living. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا أقسم بيوم القيامة No, I swear by the day of judgment. ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة And I swear by that soul that reproaches you. أيحسب الإنسان أن لن نجمع عظامة Does man think we will not bring back his bones together? بلا قادلين على أن نصوي بنانة But no, we will bring back even his fingerprints. Brothers and sisters, just think about this, just this whole statement. Two arguments have been given. Number, uh, actually three arguments have been given. I'll, I'll tell you exactly how many arguments here. First argument is, who is the one that is reciting this? La uqsimu There, Because one side is saying, the Quraysh of the Arabs, they say, oh, there is only this life. There's nothing more than this life. So the first dalil or the first proof that there will be a day of judgment, who is the one that is testifying that there will be a day of judgment is the person Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He is that person. About, <clears throat> I'll tell you a story about him. So it relates to this idea. But the fact that when 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 somebody some some somebody who is a thief, or when somebody is like Abu Jahl for example, somebody is a monster human being. He gives an argument. Oh, there's only this life, 
And then somebody nice like Abu Bakr, somebody nice like Muhammad, they said, no, no, there's a day of judgment. Whose words carry more weight? So the story is that, you know, the Prophet ﷺ, he was a prophet. And he had gone a little bit far from, uh, he had met somebody to sell him a horse. So Prophet Muhammad told him, okay, I will come and meet you at such and such place outside the city and take the horse from you there. Because the person who told him the horse is outside the city. And there may have been a conspiracy in Quraysh to deframe the Prophet, to do character assassination against him. So the Prophet ﷺ went to where the person told him, okay, he went outside and he paid him for the horse and he took the horse. And, uh, no, actually, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. He paid him for the horse and the Prophet told him, why don't you take your time and come to the city and when you come to the city, you can give me the horse. He came to the city and he started selling the horse again. He's already taken the money from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So the Prophet ﷺ said to him, I've already purchased this horse from you. He said, no, 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 you haven't. You're lying. Do you have any witnesses? So one man stood up and said, I witness that he has sold this horse to you. And so then the affair was settled. He was given the horse. And now the Prophet goes to him and says, you were not there. How can you bear witness that I was sold this horse. And so he responded by saying to the Prophet ﷺ that I bear witness, I believe because you say so, I believe that an angel is coming down to you with the book of God, with the book of Allah. I believe because you say this. I believe in the Day of Judgment because you say it. So if you're not going to lie about God, how are you going to lie about buying a horse? The point is that when you look at it from a perspective of the space of the Quraysh versus the Prophet, the Prophet had the moral, when the Prophet said something, it carried a lot more a moral authority. It carried a lot of weight because Muhammad is saying this. Just like, you know, before when he became a Prophet, he asked all of the people on the mountain that will you believe me if there's an army, if I say there's an army behind me to attack you, and they said yes, we will believe you. And then you know the, that he said about his prophethood that I am the prophet of Allah and so on and so forth. Wallahi la tamutunna kama tanamun. I swear by Allah you will all die just as you all sleep. And you will all be raised up back just as you all wake up. You will be raised before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the person who is saying this is Muhammad. So this is the first dalil. La uqsimu bi yawm al qiyamah. The second dalil is the internal. Look at your inner self. You know they're extroverts and they're introverts. Introverts, they look into themselves. A person who looks into himself can tell, yes, there is right and wrong. There has to be right and wrong. There has to be a purpose to life. There has to be some transcendent realities. There has to be things that are real, that are beyond human perception. There have to be things that are real beyond human hearing and seeing that we cannot perceive. There has to be reality beyond our perceptions. And the third proof, you can say, is not an internal proof. And you know, the proof I mentioned about the Prophet is like the courts, when an eyewitness comes and witnesses something. The second proof is an internal proof. You think about it. Is this true for you within you? The third but no, we will bring back even his fingerprints is the proof, you could say a scientific proof, external, empirical proof, not scientific, but empirical proof that, that Allah is saying this and that this has to be true, that there is a day of judgment, that we will all be raised back on the day of judgment. So Allah continues. <clears throat> No, I swear by the Day of Judgment. And I swear by that part of yourself that reproaches you and tells, gives you the guilty feeling. Does man not think we will bring back his bones? But you yourself will be amazed that day where you will, you will, you will see your own fingerprints back together. After you've been in the ground, Knowing how long your protons and neutrons and your atoms and you've been decayed and gone and gone, but Allah will bring you back. Man always wants to argue with what is in front of him. I will. Meaning, he's Allah is talking about the day of judgment, but this has 
a very profound meaning in this ayah, which I'll come back to later. Now Allah raises another question that they used to ask. So Allah brings it. Yes, They ask you, O Prophet, when will the Day of Judgment happen? When, the, when your sight, when you're looking at things, will be dazed. And when the, the moon will be, the day when the moon is darkened. And the day where the sun and the moon smash into one another. Again, another scientific reality, which is the balance of the gravity is being talked about. When will the Day of Judgment occur? It will occur the day where all the, everything will smash into each other. The earth and the sun and the moon will smash into each other. This concept could not have been understood by somebody in the time of the Prophet This. This concept could only be understood by somebody in today's world. And so Allah, you know, this would be very eloquent words, but they wouldn't be fully grasped in the way we grasp it today. And the Prophet said this, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about the Qur'an, La tanqidu ija'ibuhu, the wonders of Qur'an will never end. The wonders of Qur'an, Qur'an will never end. And so these are some of the new wonders of Qur'an, that we look at the Qur'an in a new, fresh way. So Allah says, uh, بَلْ يُرِيدُ الْإِنسَانُ لِيَفْجُرَ أَمَامًا يَسْأَلُ أَيَّانَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامًا فَإِذَا بَرِقَ الْبَصَرُ وَخَصَفَ الْقَمَرُ When your sight is dazed that day, the moon is darkened, and then after that the moon and the sun, they crash into one another. فَإِذَا بَرِقَ الْبَصَرُ وَخَصَفَ الْقَمَرُ وَجُمِعَ الشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ يَقُولُ الْإِنسَانُ يَوْمَ إِذٍ أَيْنَ الْمَفَرُ On that day man will say, where is my way out? Where do I go? I'm stuck. He's stuck. Where do I go? Ain al mafar. What's the escape? Kalla. No escape today. La wazir. There is no escape today. Today you have to answer for all the things you did in this life. I will inshallah uh, continue in my second khutbah. Aqulu qawli hadha. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ad al-muslimina wa al-muslimina. In Alhamdulillahi, Nahmaduhu, Nasta'inu, and Astaghfiru. When a shadow and la ilaha illa law, who are the Hula Sharikala. When a shadow and Muhammad and Abduhu or Sulu, or Salahu Bil Haki Bashira, or Nadira, Baina Yaday is Sir, Mayutilla, or Sula, who fathered Rashada, or Mayu Sahuma, for I do illa Nusa. أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم كلا لا وزر so there will be no escape on that day إلى ربك يوم إذن المستقر and your destiny your destination that day your place of rest that day will be in front of your Lord when you raise up when you're raised up on the day of judgment that is difficult enough but the, in the day of judgment the hardest point the hardest point is when you're actually going to be face to face answering the questions Allah is going to ask you about the life thing. What you did with your knowledge, where did you earn your money from, what did you, you know, so on and so forth. <clears throat> so, وَجُمِعَ الشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرِ يَقُولُ الْإِنسَانُ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ أَيْنَ الْمَفَرْ كَلَّا لَا وَزَرْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ الْمُسْتَقَرْ يُنَبَّأُ الْإِنسَانُ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ بِمَا قَدَّمَ وَأَخَّرْ on that day, meaning the day of judgment, you will be told of all the things you did, you left behind you, and the things that you brought forward. Now this, this statement has many meanings. Meaning the good deeds you left behind you that you could have done, and the good deeds you brought with you. Or has many other meanings, but I'm just going to leave it to this one. Now this statement here is a great, 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 great statement of the Quran. It is... I mean, anybody who's studied higher level psychology will appreciate this state because it's so powerful. Allah says, بَلِ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَىٰ نَفْسِهِ بَصِيرًا وَلَوْ أَلْقَىٰ مَعَافِرًا 
Every human being has insight to himself, even though he may be throwing excuses. Man makes up excuses to not see his own inner reality. You have to live life giving yourself no, giving yourself no chances to give excuses to yourself. That's when you can reach perfection. Don't give yourself excuses. But in insan wa ala nafsihi basira. A man has insight to himself. A man knows how good or bad he really is. Even though I want to mention, Quranically speaking, every human being feels he's good. You'll never go to prison and find anybody who says, Oh, you know, I'm a really bad person. I really deserve this. Generally, you will not find this. You may find people who have guilt. This is true. But generally, the attitude is, I am generally a good person, but this, this, this happened. There's always that excuse. I'm a good person, but she provoked me to hit him. I'm a good person, but, you know, there's always that excuse. So, but in, in, and when, you, when you're counseling people, this is exactly what happens. People will accept, yes, it was wrong, but, and then the excuse that comes with that. And this is very, very common about human beings. That we, to make ourselves feel good, we make excuses. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, but man has full insight to himself even though he's throwing excuses and then there for at first a human being knows I'm throwing excuses oh I hit her because she was provoking me so I hit her so in the beginning you know this is an excuse this isn't a real and really what's happening inside you even feel guilty inside because of what you're saying but then you believe in your excuses. And then you even you start believing in your excuses. And then you then you when you start believing in your excuses, then you then you are beginning to have less and less insight into yourself. And by the way, this is a very important principle when you're counseling everyone, anyone, your children. Why didn't you do the homework? I was gonna do the homework, but this, you know, but I was gonna do this, but this. This this is this excuse that human beings give is where they have to be counseled, is where they have to be helped. I would have been a good husband, but, well, whatever, you know, whatever it is. But in insan wa ala nafsihi basira, walau al ma'azira. And do not, uh, even if you're throwing excuses. Now, very interestingly enough, I don't have time, but I'm going to go through this very fast. You know, just like a teacher is teaching in the class, so a teacher is teaching in the class, and then one student, he's doing something wrong, so what happens? He stops teaching what he's teaching, and he says to the student, hey, don't do this. And then after scolding the student, or telling the student not to do this, then he goes back to his lecture. This Surah Al-Qiyamah, by the way, is one of the...